by Lynn Cherry. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now, all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why had they come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapok tree. Then he left. Does anybody know what this is? An armadillo? An armadillo? Not an armadillo. It's a hedgehog. It's an African pygmy hedgehog. Now he's full grown. He's not going to get any bigger. And he's nocturnal. You know what that is? When an animal's nocturnal? It means that he likes to sleep all day and come out at night. So right now he's, he's a little confused because I just woke him up. So it's going to take him, take him a minute to figure out what we're doing here. Well, he's kind of being squirmy and wondering why he's awake. Because normally he'd be asleep right now. So he's going to be a little fussy for a little bit. And when we look at his face, we can see that he's got little tiny eyes, big ears, and a long nose. All right? Well, since he's out at night, he doesn't need to see that well, and that's okay because his eyes are pretty small. And he doesn't see that well. But he can smell really well, and he can hear really well. Okay? Hey, you. How you doing? Now, his back is covered in quills. And these are sharp, and that's why I have the gloves on. But right now, he's pretty relaxed. So they're kind of lying down like fur on a dog. But if he got afraid or if he thought he was being threatened, he would constrict muscles in his back and he would make all his quills stand up. And that's his defense. Okay? So if he was walking along and a dog came up and sniffed him, let's see if I can get him to do it. Well, before he would do this, what he would do is he would hiss He'd, he'd make his quill stand up, and he would hiss, and then he'd jump straight up in the air. And what he'd do is he'd smack that dog in the nose with, with all his quills. So it'd be like getting hit in the face with a cactus. Then he would do this. He'd roll up in a ball. And he's going to stay in a ball until whatever is you know, threatening him goes away. And he's going to listen for it, and he's going to use his nose to be sure that it's safe. Now, he just did it. He kind of did a little hissing sound and a jump, didn't you? <laughs> now, when he, he's not really afraid. He knows I'm not going to hurt him. But when he's really threatened, he rolls up so tight. There he goes. That's his hiss. He rolls up so tight, you can't see any of him. You can't see his face or his feet, not even his ears. Okay? Well, yeah, he's, he's not too scared right he's now. He's so cute. Yeah, he is cute. Now, this was one of the animals that got confiscated. Because we're not allowed to have these in California. All right. There you are. There he is. He's waking up. So what do you think he likes to eat? He likes to eat crickets, bugs. He likes to eat them so much. Does he nope. like eating well, he doesn't like to eat plants. He likes to eat bugs so much that he's got another special name. And it's called insectivore. He calls so he's a nocturnal insectivore. And that means that he eats bugs, lots and lots of bugs. The smaller man took the axe he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack, whack, whack. The sounds of the blows ran through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop, chop, chop. The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack, chop, whack, chop. Soon a man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and the hum of the forest lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in a kapok tree. He slithered down his trunk to where the man was sleeping. 
He looked at the gash the axe had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed into his ear. Senior, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in this keep of trees. And I fly from trees to trees and to flower to flower collecting pollens. In this way, I pollinate the trees and the flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, the all living things depend on one another. Bzzz. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor! We have seen the ways of men. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away, and the forest will become a desert. Is this me? <laughs> this is a nine-banded armadillo. Look at his face. He's got things that are kind of similar to the hedgehog's face. He's got little tiny eyes. He's got really big ears. He's got a really long nose. And his nose is really runny. And it's running so much that it's dripping on my pants and he's wiping it on my shirt. And that's really important for him. Because look at his feet. See these feet? Nice long claws. He likes to live underground. So he digs a burrow with these feet. He also, with this nose, can smell a bug eight inches underground. And then he digs it up, right? And if he wanted to, he could completely bury himself in under two minutes. He's doing a lot of digging, right? Digging for a home, digging for food, digging to bury himself. And with all that digging, his nose would be all plugged up with dirt but it's not because he's got like this self-cleaning nose. And that's why it's really good that his nose runs all the time, okay? So his runny nose is really important for him. It helps keep all the dirt out of his nose. Now, his body is covered in this armor, and that's part of his protection. And his tail is also covered in it. And he can use his tail as a weapon. If he swings this at you and hits you with it, it really hurts because it's really hard. Okay, it's much harder than the armor on his body. And this armor helps protect him because it allows him to like run into a cactus bush or a, a plant that's really thorny. So if an animal's chasing him, he can just put his head down and kind of run in there. And all those spines are just going to kind of scrape off his back. So that's his protection. A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from a canopy. Right, we are, squawked the toucan. You must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush. And soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree because his spotted coat blended into the dappled leaves and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled into his ear. Senor, 
The gay box tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And, Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you would destroy that which gives us all life. This is, this is Zeus. He's a savannah monitor and he comes from Africa. And this is the guy that if you wave at him, he will try and bite you. You don't want to wave at him. It's really important. You never want to wave at snakes or large lizards. The way they're fed, most of the large lizards and snakes, and the small snakes, they're fed animals that are, are already dead. What we do is we take them and we wave them in front of their face. That's just what your hand looks like. So if anybody ever tells you if you, you go somewhere and they have a big lizard or a snake and they, they tell you you can pet it, you always want to touch its back. You never want to try and touch its face. That way you won't get bit. Zeus smells like a snake smells with his tongue. He sticks his tongue out and it picks up particles. Then he puts it up to the roof of his mouth and it tells him what it is. So right now he's smelling everybody here. Okay. Are you smelling everybody? Are you making a lie around him? All right. Now these holes on the side of his head are his ears. He just doesn't have the outside part like us. Now Zeus is a reptile, and that means he's cold-blooded. To cuddle up next to him, he wouldn't be warm because he's he's what we call cold-blooded. So for him to get warm, he has to get his heat from an outside source. He's got these really long claws. That helps him dig up bugs. He'd eat bugs, snails, a small mouse, or a bird. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground, plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man. She spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? A child from the Yano Mamo tribe, who lived in the rainforest, knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child, and all around him staring were the creatures who